Over the years, I've tried my fair share of keyboard switches. I got MX blues, reds, blacks, silvers, beans, beans greens, greens, potatoes, tomatoes. tomatoes. You get it, I've tried a lot of switches, but I mainly stuck to the widely available ones that come pre-installed on keyboards. Well, today I decided it was time for me to get into something more exotic. And that's what we're doing on your boot sequence. Personally, when I started to delve into the mechanical keyboard game, I naturally chose blue switches. I don't know why, but it seems like overall, as a beginner, clicky blues just scream at you, I'm finally a gamer with a mechanical keyboard. That's until you own it for about three months and you realize that the blue switches are just literally screaming at you, especially at night. All right, it's time to play some video games. Oh. Anyways, since those beginner days, I've been trying all kinds of switches, and I've landed on these. At home, I use good old Cherry MX Reds, and at work, I use a Razer keyboard that has the uh, Razer yellow switches. But I'm trying to get more into the custom stuff, so I asked some companies to send me some switches, and voila, my current collection. I got Gatorons, Cherries, Kales, and Gamma Ks. With the amount of typing that I do at work and at home, I do have to respect specific conditions. At work, they can't be too loud. While it doesn't happen often, if Mike from Hardware Canucks is shooting a video behind me, well, I have to stop typing or the mic will pick it up. At home, since I stay up pretty late, I have to be pretty quiet. So what we're gunning for here is the stealthiest of all switches. So let's listen up. Now there's obviously a winner here, and it's these right here. They're called the Phoenix Switches, and they're made by Gamma K. I also have their Bumblebee and their Crystal Switches here, but they serve a different purpose. They're not very silent. So these Phoenix Switches, obviously they're dead silent, but it's not just that that made me like them so much. Let's look at these stems real quick. The original Cherry MX Plus Sign stem is, well, the OG. It's great, but it leaves a lot of wobble on the keys. And that's why now a lot of switch manufacturers have, well, switched to a design with a box around the OG cherry stem, like this scale white right here. Now this helps a ton for stability, but they're still a little wobbly in all directions. I mean, look at this. The Gamma K switches on the other hand, well, they're built different. Whether it's the Bumblebee, the Phoenix, or their crystal switches, they all have one thing in common. They are super stable. I haven't been able to find the name for this kind of stem, but essentially it's like an elongated box or a rectangle that's missing the middle. I'll call them bracket switches since, well, they look like open and closed brackets. Now, I've seen similar Steps. My Razer keyboard at work looks similar, and the Varmillo EC lineup that I saw online also looks similar. But if we look at the silent switch, the uh, Gamma K Phoenix, it actually has a channel or a groove on either side of the switch, which makes it a lot stiffer in the front to back movements. Plus, they're super smooth thanks to the fact that they're pre lubed. The Bumblebee and the Crystal switches don't have those grooves on the sides of the uh, stem, but they are still very stable. The Crystal switch is actually rock solid, while the Bumblebee still wobbles just a little bit. Now, if we look at the specs of these switches, my favorite ones are the Phoenix ones. They have the shortest travel at 3.3 millimeters, and they're the lightest ones of the bunch. If we look at the Crystal switch, it's like a super stable and slightly heavier MX Red, and the Bumblebee switch benefits from a uh, shallow actuation point at 1.3 millimeters instead of the usual two millimeters. Now, before we get to the price, let me be serious for a second. This video 
video isn't sponsored by Gamma K at all. And uh, I assumed that they were just rip off clone switches from other brands. But after actually diving deep into the mechanical keyboard game, not too deep though, but still after a nice soak in the community, I gotta say, these switches, I mean, all three models are very impressive. I couldn't find anything like them. And like I said, the Phoenixes are the stealthiest that I've tested so far. So yeah, if you're in the market for a super silent switch, how much is it going to set you back? Well, the Phoenix ones specifically go for 12.99 US dollars. That's about 16.75 Canadian per box. Each box contains 35 switches. So as long as you have a 60 to 70% keyboard, you can get away with just two boxes. For me, well, I'm a 100% keyboard type of guy, so it's gonna cost me about 40 bucks. Now, is it worth it? Well, it depends. Of course, you can buy yourself a keyboard from a reputable brand like Corsair, Razer, Ducky, or any other big brand. But these will usually be one and dones and pretty expensive. You buy the keyboard, you have the keyboard. If you wanna mod it, you can, but it's a little more difficult. Most of them don't have hot swappable switches. If you're already a keyboard head though, or if you wanted to dip your toes into the community, hell yeah, they're worth it. They're a lot less expensive than similar kits, and if you like the specs, they'll definitely hold up. Plus, you can slap them on something as inexpensive as this Red Dragon keyboard that cost me about 35 bucks. You put a couple mods here and there on that keyboard, and this keyboard will slap. Or you can go with a Gamma K keyboard case. This thing has a volume knob, RGB, and is wireless. And it's only 66 bucks bare bones, or about 85 bucks with the switches and the keycaps. Now, of course, there are other brands, but that's why you gotta, you know, join the community. Personally, I really like Keyboard over on YouTube. He's like the build zoid of mechanical keyboards. And if you do go check him out, tell him that I sent you. In any case, my search for a silent switch finally found its contender, but that doesn't mean that I'm done reviewing keyboards, or switches for that matter. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like if you liked it, a comment if there's another keyboard you'd like me to review. As usual, click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.